Alright, for this design we're going to do a weldment frame uh, underneath the weldment frame. Uh, first thing we want to do is draw the sketch of what the weld profile is going to look like. So, we'll start a sketch here and we'll hit sketch. We'll put in a rectangle. Rectangle is going to go down the center here and we'll put in the size of the unit. So, let's say 48 inches by only four inches. So there's our frame size. Say OK. Hit check. We'll hit save. Save this unit into play. Go over to the applications. Underneath the applications right here, this looks pretty good on the design, but we're inside what? We're inside an assembly. I mean we're inside a part. What we want to do is build a, a weld frame assembly on the design. So we'll start with the assembly, weld frame assembly, so WFA, your initials, and 001. We can drop that sketch into place, so that's why I like building just the weld frame on it. And then off of that, we can go default and drop it into play. So that'll help parametrically control the unit into play. So now we go to frameworks. Underneath frameworks we have to build the project. So it's a WFA dash your initials dash 001 and then you can say check. Off of that now we can build in the profiles. Profile on the unit is we'll say is inches. Whoops, I clicked too quick there. Uh, inches and in this we want angular profile. On this angular we want the L's to be how big? Let's go for 2 by 2 by 3 sixteenths. So hit OK and now you have that profile. Now next is the operation and you must select the profile and where you wish to put this unit. So there's where we wish to put it. Now we want to rotate this object in some shape or form. So let's go ahead and leave it inside the unit just like this on the design this time. And then repeat the operation, throw it to the other side. On this one we're going to have to flip it around. So keep on flipping until you see it right over here. So right there, uh, if we get it there, now we want to flip the opposite. We'll toggle. So there's the opposite. Repeat the operation. Start here. Now on this one, we'll flip around. So let's toggle the other side. That looks pretty good on the design right there. But let's say that we wanted that sketch instead of that sketch to operate in the middle of the part right there. Let's say we wanted it to operate the back wall of the unit. Then if you look here, that's the front. There's the back. So that's how you can look at how those sketches operate on your sketch alone. So same scenario across this design. We'll say repeat this operation again. And it's going to come up here on this next operation. So it'll be this sketch. Uh, we want it to be this side. And we want it to toggle. And so it was this side, then toggle. And that came in pretty good on the design. We'll say OK. Um, now we'll close down on this operation. If you look at it, it's bringing the list of materials and everything in on the design. So once we have this into place, uh, last thing we might want to do is we might want to build a sketch across the unit. Can we do sketches on the unit that we have right now, Frank, and control it instead of going over to your sketch frame? Yes, you can. Okay, you can parametrically. I just like controlling a little frame on the unit. Uh, what that frame does is it makes it a little bit easier to control on the way your items come in. Now if we just want to add a couple of beams, we come over here. We can add the beams and it controls the dimension retrieval. So if we come up here, we build for the model, we start a sketch. Now let's put in one beam from here to here. And then another beam from here to here across the design. 
So if we hit save on this unit, now we come back and we're close, we can see that those two units are it's up to date and it's got those two lines in there. So let's now drop in another beam set. So we'll say a new profile. Well, instead of angular, let's go with the U bracket. And then the U bracket, we know that we had 2 by 2, so let's look at the C channel fractionals. And uh, those are pretty big. You see how there are three units. So let's see if we can get anything smaller. Threes, Cs, 3 by 4. Fours, so that's uh, threes. So right there is a three inch by 1.4. So underneath the C's, the C3 4.1s, those look pretty good. So we'll say OK, next, and then we can pick our first profile. We notice that we need to reorientate this unit. So first thing I might want to do is pitch it there, and that looks good, actually, the way that looks right across the unit right there. So it looks pretty good. So right there, uh, I could look at the design, but let's say I want to flip it. So let's flip it 180, 0, 0. So let's go to this one, and we'll flip it upside down. So this flips upside down. There we go. So that might be good for a mount bracket say there and now we'll do the same thing over here we'll flip and then we'll flip the opposite direction up we'll say okay say next and we don't need any more so we can close out so now we hit uh, I would hit rebuild rebuild then save now we can take and we can build um, better joints on the scenario. So if we look at this, how do these corners need to come together on this unit? They need to come together as a 1 and a 2 right there on the design. So if you look at it, which one's long? The 1. Which one's short? The 2. So if we touch this one, we want the 1, then we want the 2. And you can see how it builds them across on each other on the design. So right there looks pretty good uh, on the, their little overlap te technique. Uh, defining corners, joints with overlap is another one that you could do. So right there, you can see how it does the full overlap. But you got to watch it when it does the overlap because it kind of embeds them into, into each other. So it's up to you how you wish to do that and how you wish to want to play the game of cutting them. Uh, I'm going to go with the overlap right there. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to repeat the operation. Repeating the operation, I must pick who? I must pick the long, then the short. Looks good. Then repeat the operation over here. So this is going to be the joint. And then the third button over, I must pick the long, then the short. Then hit OK. Then over here, repeat the operation, the third one, pick the long, then the short. Now on these right here, let's take a look. Those could be a different trim. Those are just going to be a T-trim operation on the design. So the T-trim is just going to be the one being the T and then the two being the, the T-top. So right here and then there. And if you look at it the way it's doing that, we want it to actually be the overlap. So there's our overlap on our design. Uh, we repeat that operation, and then we want to pick who first. Uh, we want to pick the one, then the two. Repeat that operation. And then we want to pick the one and two. And then over here, the one and the two. Yeah, you're like, Frank, well, these things are embedded into each other. Nobody's going to weld like that on the design. Well, watch what they do. Uh, rebuild. Save. Once you've got it saved, if we look at this unit, that unit needs to be cut how? 
it needs to be cut just enough for that curve to happen on the design. So if I activate just that unit and I activate it, now I can see the line coming through here. So if I touch here for a sketch, and I can even call it an extrude cut, I can project, and I can project this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and even that curve if I want. I can project the outer edge, and I can project this edge up here on the bottom. Then the bottom edge, and I am done right there. Uh, only thing I have to do is trim. So let's just trim the bottom edge, and I should have a closed profile there. If you see it shade in, you know it's closed. Now, everything's down the middle, so if I reference that plane, I can use that for a mid-plane mirror. So now I can mirror my entity. So grab my profile, mirror it across this line. So I should have two close profiles that are going to clean up and cut my material. So now if I scroll through, I'll cut the material off. You can see how that will cut nice. Um, I can say through all or just cut it at a certain length. And then once I get back into my assembly, I'm going to do that same process on the other side. So now you can see how it looks for the weld. And you can see how it looks for the cut right there. So I'll do that same thing on this opposite side. So we'll grab here, I'll start, activate it, touch here, hit extrude cut, now project, project 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to stop there and do a line instead. And the reason why I did that is now when I pick up a reference, I pick that plane up for my reference. That's going to be my center plane for my mirror. I'm going to grab that whole profile and I'm going to mirror it across that line. Say OK, project, cut material, and hit OK. Get back into my main assembly. And then I've got to do that now to who? I have to do that now to this little C channel here. Now, off this, we'll just cut this, so I'll activate this part. I'll touch here, and then I'll start an extrude cut. Um, if I rotate this way, I can pick up that line as a projection. So I can project here, project that line. See it come over? Now I can project this edge, this edge, and that, whoops, not that one and this bottom edge, that one and that one. Now all I have to do off of that is mirror it across. So first I'm going to trim. So I come in and delete. Delete those two edges. I'm going to run a center line at the midpoint of that. Boom. Then I'm going to clean up this scenario. So I need a little line. That one looks like it matches up right there. You can see it kind of popping, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use the cornering. So there's a corner trim, and there's a corner trim. That's what that does for you. I'll grab that profile, hit mirror, and mirror crossed. Hit OK. Flip the direction, cut material, and hit OK. Now start the operation again, so activate this main assembly, rebuild, hit save, then do that on this last piece. So activate the part, touch here, hit extrude cut. Um, on this I can project that edge. If I say loop and just grab that whole edge, I projected everything. Now if I just grab project and project that edge and then flip over and project just that edge. 
that's a quick, dirty way to get the assembly parametrics in there. I gotta pull this, so see if I can pull it or extend it. So if I look across here, um, if I elbow this, there's my elbow. If I elbow this, there's my elbow. But over here, I lost the line. But if I just draw the line once over to there, and then hit L, L, draw another line straight over to here. Now come in and elbow those. Touch here to here for the elbow, and then touch here to here for the elbow. Say OK. Flip the side of the cut and hit check. So there's the cuts for the part. Now, next thing we want to do is probably put in some mount holes on this unit. So if we touch up here, uh, first thing that you might want to do here is you can activate the part or you can put in holes where? You can put them in on the assembly alone. That's pretty crazy. But the problem if you do that is they won't come in on the drawing for this part. So that can be a pain. So what I personally do here is I always activate the part. I touch the part, then I'll normalize. So if you start uh, the hole factor on there, you can put in the hole and you can pull off the edge. You can pull off the center point of that part. So that would be the center point of who? The main assembly. So let's say 8 inches over. And then from the edge, let's say 1 inch. And then whatever diameter it's supposed to be. So let's say it's a 0 .41. So there's the drill for 0.41. Now it goes up to next, maybe, and then we're done with it. So at that point, you'd be finished with that design. So now we can come in and we can copy that, Control C, and then paste. When you do that, it's wanting to know where the next one's going to be. So the next one is going to be where? It's going to be 8 and it's going to be possibly off that thing. It, it might be actually located off that axis. So we move that little dot over to the axis and we say 1.25. So now we've got them located in there and we can say OK. Now we can write a pattern for the unit. So if we write a pattern over here, we can project that pattern over this direction. So instead of dimension, we'll say direction. And we'll go this far across the unit. We'll flip it. And we'll say 16 inches. And then hit check. And you'll see the first hole come in place. So if we do this, and we underneath the pattern, we find both the holes. So if we look at that as our value of our pattern, you can see it has just this hole. Well, what happens if you pattern both those holes in there? So that could be uh, a group set. So there's one, there's two. So let me delete the pattern real quick. I would grab both of those, possibly. And then off of that, I would group those. So if we look up here, here's their value for group. Then I can pattern those, and I can pattern them in a direction straight to the right. I would say 16, and then flip the direction, and hit check. So now I've got the two mount holes on that unit. Uh, come over here, activate the unit, hit save. And now we must build uh, the last two holes that we have to do on this part. Let's say they're a totally different pattern. So we activate here. If I control V, you see how I can't uh, control V on that. So I would big build a hole, build it in. I would build it off a of who? I can build it off that middle axis if I want. That would be 8. Uh, that was a weird dimension. See so yeah, how that one's not really 8. 
So right there I'm going to pull and I'm going to pull to the plane instead. So I'm going to say 6. Boy, that's being weird. So when it's being weird like that, I'm not going to trust it. So I'll touch here and I'll start a new plane and then I'll pull to the plane first. Then I'll pull to the other edge of the beam. Second. We want it directly down the middle. So let's say 2. So this would be 1.5 roughly. Maybe 1.4. And if I look at it, yeah, it looks like 1.5. So 1.5. Off that, now I can come over and I can look at this crazy 4. So I can say, let's say 6. So there's the 6, and then I only want to go up to next. Since it's in this beam, I can easily run a mirror and then pick what? Pick the mirror plane across the design. So if I look across this beam, I might not have a mirror in here. I might not be able to see it. So what you do before you do that mirror is you figure out where the hole is. And before you do that, you find your mirror. So if you turn up your uh, planes, if he has these off, or whoever has them off, it might be an issue. So I might throw in what? I might throw in a plane before I do that. So I'll touch here. I'll throw a point, and I'll say 0.5. And now I'll throw a plane on that entity right there, related to who? Related to the end of my beam. So right there. So now, if I've done that, I've used those both references, the surface and the point, and it puts a plane there. So now I have something parametric that I can use for using that mirror. So come up to the tree, find out where we're at, we're green here, and then we touch where? The hole, touch the plane, and hit mirror. Uh, so we want there, and hit check, and it mirrored across. Be careful if you do that because you don't have a dimension. So just remember that scenario can come into play. So hit save. Now we come back out. We activate the main assembly. And we say 6.5.